<laughs> if I was uh, to ask you how you know what you wanted to become when you're young, you're mm-hmm. still young. What is it that you want to become? <laughs> uh, I remember those days yes. when I was a young boy. When I was a young boy, mm-hmm. I had very many aspirations, very many desires. Yeah. First of all, I wanted to get into the, into the political scene especially maybe be a governor or maybe the president Mm -hmm. who knows Mm -hmm. that was then those are the kind of dreams that i had yeah but growing up i've grown up just like any other normal child Mm -hmm. any african normal child and i'm glad that i'm here today yeah yes so how was your growing up talk to us about your family background in terms of Mm -hmm. how you were being raised Mm -hmm. yeah beginning as a boy uh i've been raised in a family of four Mm -hmm. that's my mom my dad and then for a long time i was the only son i was the only son until now when i was in class eight that now uh, we were able another member of the family was added my mm-hmm. younger brother mm-hmm. who is around now six years old yes. so i schooled in lensaba primary school mm-hmm. that's why i schooled up to class eight and then later i joined a uh, friend school kamsinga mm-hmm. in western kenya that is where now i was able now to do my secondary education and then uh, after that now is, is when I'm able now, I was able now to join the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So how, how was your, you know, I'm looking at your family background in terms of how your parents have really been able to raise you up to become the visionary that you are today. Mm-hmm. How, how, what kind of I- impact have they played in your life to who you are today? Uh, one of the greatest things that I love about my parents is Ever since I was a young, uh, as a young boy, mm-hmm. they used to speak good things in my life. Mm-hmm. They used to uh, plant seeds of greatness in my life. I remember those days when I, I used to perform well back in uh, in high school and also in primary school. Mm-hmm. So every time during the closing days, they could award me. So you see, like your parents are there, the students are there. We are gathered and we are about to say the top three, and I was among them. Mm-hmm. So every time I could go to the front and they could award me. So my mom used to speak a lot. She used to say, this is the beginning. This is the beginning of the greatness. Mm-hmm. So she used to speak so much. She used to affirm me so much. She used to uh, convince me that I'm really, really, really great. Mm-hmm. So I think that affirmation from my parents that are uh, totally like they, they believed that this son is just, he's not just a normal son, mm. but he's a son who has uh, a greatness, he has a potential in him. So they used to affirm me so much mm-hmm. and I ran with it. And that is how I'm able to become the person that I am today. Yeah. Yes. T- talking of uh, your purpose, you know, mm-hmm. looking at your age, mm-hmm. yeah, there are people who come to discover their purposes at a very later age mm-hmm. when they have wasted their time their energy mm-hmm. and their you know money wasted life but you're a young man and you've already discovered who you are and mm-hmm. uh, what you want to do in life how possible is that um, um how will i address that is that mm-hmm. every man every man there is usually an ability there's usually an ability or a potential of greatness in every man mm-hmm. every single human being there's usually a potential of greatness mm-hmm. and that potential of greatness is not uh, described by where you come from it's not described by the kind of background that you are in mm-hmm. if you look at gold you realize even if gold is uh, mined from a very muddy place it still remains to be gold mm-hmm. so god has deposited seeds of greatness in each one of us potentials so it comes to a point now how are you yielded to god how are you yielded to god because the more you yield the more you the earlier you discover your calling the earlier Mm. you discover your purpose you Mm. get it yeah so take time one of the things that i really appreciate is that i've been raised in a christian background Mm -hmm. and even when i joined high school i was so active in the christian union so you realize that the more you spend time with god the more he reveals more to you he reveals you to you yeah. he reveals the kind of things that he wants you to do in this life mm-hmm. you get it yeah so i think it's number one is yielding to god mm-hmm. but again you'll have people who maybe they think maybe they have lost time or something but one thing that i love the most is you're always welcome back yeah. to the father mm. and god is able to redeem time yeah he's able to redeem time mm. and once you are able to walk in purpose 
uh, things go very, very, very well. Yeah. Yes. So, Kyle, this morning you're telling us that it doesn't matter uh, what time somebody could be because somebody is watching yeah. us this morning and probably they think mm -hmm. they're too young. Mm -hmm. to know their purpose mm -hmm. and someone else will be saying i think i'm too old <laughs> uh, something yeah. funny you need yeah. to know that purpose is not even determined by age okay. per se mm -hmm. because at the age of 12 we see jesus christ already he was already discussing the scriptures okay. with the people mm -hmm. at the age of 16 who do we see we see david mm -hmm. we see david at the age of 16 was killing bears mm -hmm. he was killing lions yeah so you realize uh, purpose is not just a matter of age. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the greatest examples that I look up to is uh, Hubert Angel Jr. Yeah. When you look at Hubert Angel Jr., I think he's 20 or 21. Mm -hmm. So he's a prophet. He's called the seer. Mm -hmm. He's the CEO of um, a global water company. Mm -hmm. He's a student. He manages um, the church in uh, Spirit, uh, Spirit London okay. Embassy. Mm -hmm. At his young age, he's already doing a lot of things. So one thing that I need people to understand is mm -hmm. when we are young people, number one, we have the advantage of time. Okay. We have the advantage of energy. Energy. You have zeal. Mm -hmm. you, you see, you have yeah. zeal. Mm -hmm. So every time you engage in purpose at a very early age, you realize you become very, very, very effective. Mm -hmm. And something you need to understand that God is able to empower us. Mm -hmm. So it is not by our own uh, strength. It's by the empowerment that comes by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So when you want to fulfill purpose even at a young age, do not feel like you're, even the Bible says, um, do not despise mm -hmm. your, youthful your youthfulness. Fullness. Do not despise. Let even nobody despise yes. you. Are, you are a young person. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in the moment you realize that, that I have God on my side, I'm being backed by God, uh, fulfilling purpose becomes very, very easy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I'm just asking you to right now to describe to us and to mm -hmm. our viewers, how would you define your purpose? <laughs> um, you yeah. see, purpose for purpose, it's different mm -hmm. for different people. Okay. There are people who will be called into the fivefold mm -hmm. ministry. Yeah. There are people who will be called to serve humanity, mm -hmm. like for me. Yeah. So for me, one of my greatest purposes, number one, is to... I love interacting with the young people. Mm. And one of the things is to shift their mindsets. Okay. To teach them the knowledge and the truths of God. Mm. And um, for me, uh, you see what the Bible says that I was naked, you clothed me. I was hungry, you fed me. Mm -hmm. So that is my purpose. Okay. I want to reach out to that person. Can someone stand today and say, when I was hungry, you clothed me. Mm -hmm. When I was naked, uh, when I was hungry, you fed me. Mm -hmm. When I was naked, you clothed me. Yeah. I want when someone stands to say that, that can be my calling, that when I go back to the Father, He will say that, son, um, this person was naked, you clothed him. Mm -hmm. And that is what I called you to do. Because you realize some people can be so, the challenges of life, okay. they can be so subjected to the challenges of life. Mm -hmm. And you just doing that act of kindness, can become they can see the jesus in you yeah. the compassion part of jesus in you mm -hmm. yeah amazing amazing conversation we are having this morning with carl james mm -hmm. and uh, even as we continue with this conversation mm -hmm. let's begin you you're still a student yes a ceo at the same time yes you're you're founded and directing a spread a smile uh, organization yes and uh, let's begin right there where did all this begin how did you begin it at this age um, first of all, I'll say ever since I was a young person, mm. I've always had that desire of becoming great, okay. of becoming great. Mm. Number two, I've always had that desire of impacting the lives of people yeah. ever since I was a young person. Mm -hmm. So I remember back then in high school, um, you see like the way you could come for holidays. Mm -hmm. So every time you could come for holidays, I could see my fellow high schoolers. We've come for holidays. People are just engaging in a lot of unnecessary stuff. Okay. They are engaging in a lot of unnecessary stuff. Mm -hmm. Then I thought to myself, how can I engage these young people in a very productive way? Mm -hmm. So the first time I I looked for around or I looked for around fifteen of them and mm -hmm. I said, Yes. Instead of enjoying these many, many things that are not beneficial, why don't we do something that can be very productive? even to our community. Mm -hmm. So the first time I gathered 15 people and we say, by the way, where are we right now as you gather 15 that, people? That time we were in Lainsaba. Okay. 
So we, I gathered them and I told them, mm. instead of us wasting time during this holiday, why don't we go to a children's home and just spend time with these children mm. so that they can know that, you see, so that they can know they're still loved, they're mm. still cherished. Yeah. So when I got there, I gathered and um, there were around 19 of us. Mm-hmm. So when we went there, that was the first time, I, uh, that was around, um, that was 30th. No, 7th of December 2019. Yeah. So that's the first time we went there. Mm-hmm. So after we went there, then we were like, after we did a successful event at the mm-hmm. children's home, we engaged them, we inspired them. Then we said, why should we now make it now our culture that every time we have a holiday, we do that. Okay. So 2020 came, COVID came. Mm-hmm. All of us are idle, are at home. Yeah. There is nothing we can do. Mm-hmm. So that is the time we maximized. Okay. So we could meet almost uh, every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. You could see young people gathered, mm-hmm. 20, 30, 20, 30 uh, young people who were gathered. Yes. We began doing mentorship programs. We began um, visiting children's homes. Mm-hmm. And through that, that is how now the vision of Spread a Smile organization was born. Okay. Yeah. That's how it began. Yeah, that's how it began. Uh-huh. Just young people who were gathering and who did not want to waste their time yeah. in a lot of unnecessary stuff, mm. but thought to themselves that instead of utilizing this time doing other negative things, mm. we use this time to impact our community. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Talk talk of us, you know, Spread a Smile organization. Mm-hmm. What, what is it? What do you stand for? What is mm-hmm. it that you really do? Um, spread a Smile organization is a community-based organization. It's a CBO that is registered, number mm. one. Yeah. Uh, number two, we believe that we are the reasons. We usually say our, our motto is, be the reason someone smiles. Mm-hmm. So we are engaged in two things. Number one is charity. Number two is mentorship. Okay. Let me begin with mentorship. Mm-hmm. Mentorship, we believe that peer-to-peer mentorship, peer-to-peer mentorship is more effective. Mm-hmm. When I see a fellow young person who is coming, to inspire me, to share with me nuggets of wisdom, mm-hmm. then you realize it becomes more effective because I see this is a person of my age. Yeah. We are experiencing the same, same challenges. Mm-hmm. And this person has not uh, allowed those challenges to bring them down. Yes. But instead, he's trying to be the solution. Mm-hmm. So we saw peer-to-peer mentorship is very, very vital. So what do we do for peer, peer-to-peer to mentorship? Number one, mm-hmm. we do mentorship programs in local primary schools. Yes. In local secondary schools Mm -hmm. and then during the holidays we organize boot camps for these high schoolers okay so it can be two days or three days we just gather share knowledge have fun you get Mm -hmm. and then we come now to the charity aspect now the charity aspect is now the broader one is the bigger perspective Mm -hmm. number one we envision a world where children who come from underserved um communities mm-hmm. when i talk about underserved i mean rural places yes. marginalized areas mm-hmm. when you talk about the slums we envision a world where these children can have dignity mm-hmm. can have continuous access to their basic needs yeah. they can always feel cherished they can always feel loved mm-hmm. they can always be inspired that regardless of where you come from you can still become great you can still become that great person you've always desired to be yeah so for charity we visit children's homes mm-hmm. Currently, we visited over 40. Over 40? Over 40. Children's homes. Yes. Amazing. So we visit them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we visit children's homes. We visit uh, homes of the aged. Mm-hmm. We also do um, community programs. We, instead of going out, we organize a community program. And we do it. Mm-hmm. I remember we did one for called Chapati uh, Chapo Festival. Mm-hmm. That was before the elections. Okay. And uh, during that time, we were just doing sensitization of maintaining peace mm-hmm. uh, during the elections. And then last year, we did a very successful event called Watoto Festival, yeah. where we gathered over 120 children together mm-hmm. and shared with them an early Christmas experience. Wow. They were able to we give them the platform. They were able to showcase the kind of talents they have. Mm-hmm. Others danced, others rapped, others did their skits. And uh, at the end of the day, we were able to commune and share together. Yeah. So those are the kind of things that we are engaged in as an organization. You know, guys, I'm really, really inspired. And I believe our dear viewers are mm-hmm. getting inspired this morning. Talk to us on Facebook, Zoe TV, on YouTube, Zoe TV. And let us know exactly what you're receiving this morning from the inspiration that is coming right here from Carl James, a young CEO moving to fulfill his assignment in his generation. Mm-hmm. And, and, and uh, before we take a break, I'm just interested, mm-hmm. how comes that you are really living out your life to impact people? Mm-hmm. Because young people like you are looking for things that, you know, they look glamorous. 
you know uh -huh. they are looking for being a celeb out there mm -hmm. but for you you want to be in the middle of what is happening in other people yeah. it's not about you yes. you're thinking about other people how you can be able to change the lives of so many people mm -hmm. what really gives you that perspective i think one of the greatest things that i can ever do in this world mm -hmm. is to impact the life of someone that someone somewhere can always say mm -hmm. were it not for kyle i would not have been here were it not for kyle who came and helped me with maybe these foodstuffs that sustained me for this particular time mm -hmm. i could not be here yeah. so that urge to impact humanity that urge to see lives being transformed mm -hmm. and you realize we cannot always we cannot be complaining about the problems that we have in our communities yes we cannot mm. the much we can do is choose that we be the solutions instead of complaining let us be the solution mm -hmm. when you become the solution everything about life will become will work very very well so instead of complaining i chose I will not be complaining about things that are happening in my community, mm -hmm. but I'll rather be that person who is part of that solution. So I think that is my greatest inspiration. Mm -hmm. And also I and I I drew it from the life of Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says that every time every place that Jesus stepped, he did good. Mm -hmm. He did good. Yeah. He did good. Mm -hmm. So I want my life to live a life that I will be doing good each and every place that I go amazing amazing conversation we are having this morning with kyle james indeed the founder and the ceo the director of spread a smile indeed it's a community-based organization and at his age still a student impacting his generation it's never early never also too late for you to discover your purpose and to dive into a place whereby you can come and tell us I was born for impact. That is what uh, Carl James is telling us this morning. I was born for impact. I've been chosen to impact my generation. And he's not waiting for him to, you know, for 40 years or 50 years for him to do it. He's been doing it right now at this age. Indeed, we are going to be getting deeper into that conversation. We'll be showing you some of the things that Spread a Smile Organization has been doing at his age i'm telling you you want to be able to stay with me i'll be showing you some of those photos in regard to what spread a smile organization is doing you're watching zoe breakfast show today is relationship wednesday and we are so glad that you're connected to zoe tv inspiring lives stay tuned indeed it's an awesome awesome time of inspiration today being a relationship wednesday we are talking with carl james the founder and director of spread a, spread a smile organization leader is a community-based organization i want to appreciate all of you that are watching us this morning on facebook zoe tv on youtube zoe tv it's good to have you this morning i want to appreciate charles moasia thank you for joining us good morning and how are you charles indeed i want to appreciate uh dennis uh, uh, Papa Dennis Papa, good to have you this morning on Zoe Breakfast Show. Indeed, this morning we are getting inspired every morning in regard to the aspect of understanding our purpose and knowing that indeed we were born for 
impact and this morning as i welcome back my guest uh what a conversation we are having this morning with you carls and i'm so excited that i'm having this conversation with you at this age i'm wondering what's gonna happen to your lifetime in terms of you know at this age and you're already connected to purpose you're already pursuing purpose what will happen to your age when you get to 50 yeah it's gonna be a great story of the impact that you will make in our generation today tell us about spread a smile uh, organization what you have been doing okay mm. so as i stated before we've been engaged so much in uh in charity activities mm -hmm. we've also been engaged so much in uh, mentorship activities yes so we said about uh the mentorship activities we believe that peer-to-peer -peer mentorship is the one uh, that is more effective because you realize that when a young person is going to speak to another young person mm -hmm. there is that number one there is that connection yes there is that being challenged if yes. this person is doing this so it can also be challenged and you realize that in terms of peer-to-peer -peer mentorship mm -hmm. you people are of the same age bracket yeah so the challenges are almost similar mm -hmm. so you realize if person is uh, is able to conquer those challenges then even me as an individual mm -hmm. i'm able to conquer those challenges yeah. and for the mentorship we do number one for local primary schools mm -hmm. we also do for local uh high schools we also do for, uh, for the boot camps uh during the holidays mm -hmm. we try to engage these young minds and try to understand what is it that they really want in life yeah. and then we've also said for the charity activities we are engaged in um, number one visiting of children's homes mm -hmm. Uh, so far we have been able to visit over 40 children's homes number two we also we also engaged in community engagement community outreach programs mm. community outreach programs is where, where they say now charity begins at, at home. home so community outreach programs is where now we engage our direct community mm. we engage our direct community it can be cleaning it can be sports it can be sensitization and also uh, do visits to families for example, we have a very needy family and they need us to chip in for them. Mm. When we have, whenever we have the resources, we go visit them, we spread smiles to them. Okay. And yeah, they, it becomes a very, very great experience. Yeah. In fact, my director wants us to take a, a closer look at what Spread a Smile organization has been doing. We'll be able to look at some of these photos in regard to what he's doing. And, and right there, you, you could share with us your experience. You know, Spread a Smile, what are you doing here, guys? <laughs> uh, I remember on this day, uh, that was last year, 23rd of September, mm -hmm. we were in a Smile Community Center. And that, uh, that's a children's home that has a lot of children. Yeah. And we had a very, very amazing time. Is this the same place? No, it's not the same place. Uh -huh. It's a different program. Okay. For this one was the actual last year. Mm. So last year, this was a total festival. Okay. We were able to gather around 120 children. Mm. And we were able to give them a platform yeah. to showcase their talents. They were able, we were able even to eat together, okay. share in the Christmas mood. Mm -hmm. Yeah amazing let's keep moving on so that we can be able to capture this story indeed uh, uh part of this is still a total festival yes this is a total festival mm -hmm. now after the event now it was time to share together yeah we cooked for them the food was amazing yeah my lord even here we were we were after now now during a total festival mm -hmm. we grouped them into groups so in the groups now we were supposed to engage in games so this was uh i think it was group six yeah okay yeah mm -hmm. all right we still keep checking out and seeing uh the kind of visits that you're making this is a children it looks like a children's home yes yes this is mm -hmm. now the uh, smile community center okay that is located uh, i think it's a uh, is it don home mm -hmm. yeah i think it's in don home okay so this is where we went and the uh, the uh, the thing that i loved about these kids mm -hmm. is that they uh their devotion to god yeah we were able to engage even in a mini worship experience mm -hmm. and i just loved how these children were so broken even before the presence of god yeah meaning they understand the aspect and the essence of god in their lives mm -hmm. yeah oh that's great that is beautiful mm -hmm. and i can see you the people that you're leading all of them they are also young like you yes huh? yes this is a a, a um, a, a mentorship program that you're doing you've been the leader you're already young but mm -hmm. i can see the people that are, are also involved working together with you yes. are young people like you how yes. comes um you see like for example uh, the the age group is between uh the, i think the youngest is 18 mm -hmm. 
and the oldest is around 24. Okay. So we've been working with that uh, age group of young people. Mm -hmm. And you realize now, even this year, the young people that I'm working with, okay. they have decided to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. They've decided they will not be part of the complainers. They will be part of the people who are bringing solutions to the table. Yeah. And you realize even with these young people, they have decided even their lives that mm -hmm. I will not live a wasted life. In as much as I'm young, mm -hmm. I will not live a wasted life. I will live a life of impact. I will live a life that is directly impacting humanity. And I think that is one of the things that they saw in me. Mm -hmm. And that's where they were able to buy into the vision. And that's where we are now working with them. Yeah. Yes. You know, what really that opens my eyes to understand is that when you discover your purpose, mm -hmm. you help so many other people discover your purpose, yes. their purposes. Yes. But if you don't know your purpose, yes. what happens? <laughs> you see, like, for, for example, mm -hmm. I'm trying to, um, I usually look at it, for example, maybe look at a pastor of a church. Yeah. And uh, that church has, or like, for example, has a membership of 2,500 people. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying, I usually sit and try to imagine these people, these 2,500 people usually come for, to this pastor mm -hmm. for spiritual nourishment. Yeah. Usually come for guidance. Mm -hmm. Usually come for, you know, that's praying together with the pastor. Now I'm trying to imagine mm -hmm. what if this pastor did not realize his purpose early. Yeah. What could have happened to these 2,500 people? Mm -hmm. So that brings us to your purpose is attached. Many lives are attached mm -hmm. to your purpose. Yeah. Many lives are attached to your purpose. Mm -hmm. You realize now, if we don't come up hither, if we don't come up hither, if we don't arise and embrace our purposes in this life, mm -hmm. you realize now there are people who will be perishing just because you didn't come up here that you didn't embrace okay. your purpose. Mm -hmm. So it is very, very vital. You embrace your purpose very, very early mm -hmm. so that the lives that are depending on your purpose, they can be sustained. Yeah. Yes. Amazing journey that you have had even at your age that today you are really right here talking to us about, you know, having found your purpose, you're influencing so many people to find their purpose too. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I could ask you, what are the biggest challenges that you're going through right now? You know, you're a young man. <laughs> uh, I'm sure every purpose has its own, you know, a lot, a lot of challenges. challenges. Mm -hmm. Number one, first of all, I'm young. And uh, even me, I usually have that feeling. I just want to be a normal 20 year old, just have my life, party around, do things that any other 20 year old will want to do. Mm -hmm. So there's that pressure of conforming to what other people are doing. Okay. But now you come to realize that you are not just a normal 20 year old. Mm -hmm. You are a person who has discovered their purpose. Mm -hmm. You are a person who is on a journey of impacting lives. Yeah. So you cannot live a normal life just like the rest. Mm -hmm. Another challenge that I've been having is, um, see, this is an organization. It, uh, for our programs to be executed, mm -hmm. it needs a lot of money. It needs a lot of resources. Yeah. It needs a lot of expertise. Mm -hmm. So you realize, uh, uh, majority of majority of the people maybe who want to assist you even in actualizing this vision mm -hmm. they'll consider uh, assisting someone who maybe has been in this industry maybe that person is 40 maybe that person is 35 and above mm -hmm. but you being a young person they they find it hard to believe in your vision yeah. so that they can support you mm -hmm. so you realize sometimes the age factor people look at you they think ah you're too small you can't handle this you mm -hmm. see so that has been the biggest biggest challenge and then lastly now you realize now sometimes and you know, even working with these young people mm -hmm. sometimes they they just think like maybe you're just their normal you know okay. age mate and stuff mm -hmm. so they maybe may not like really really believe in the vision that you have yeah not unless the results prove them wrong okay yes amazing mm -hmm. uh, you know i'm looking at at you at you and uh, what you're doing today i can imagine some of the you know the risks you have had to make <laughs> talk to us about that um there's nothing that you have done that has not really pushed you to take quite some deliberate risks mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so we realize now uh, every time, uh, the moment I began doing this work of uh, impacting humanity, mm -hmm. uh, you realize now everyone knows that Kyle, Utaka to say this and Kyle, that is what people believe. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you help people 
and sometimes it does not mean that you'll have the resources to help them okay. all the time mm -hmm. you're getting yes so people have already even mastered where you live mm -hmm. so someone will have a challenge and they will know the safest place i can go to i can go to kyle's house mm -hmm. and when once i step there i'll get a solution yeah. and maybe that time even don't have even more something to offer. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest risks, I remember sometimes we used to have some teen moms. Mm -hmm. So some teen moms will come to my place and they're like, I don't have diapers for my kids. I don't have food to sustain me for the next three days. Mm -hmm. So you realize one of the biggest risks that you do is to deny yourself. Okay. So I'll say, I'll rather these people go and eat. Mm -hmm. So you get far quickly to your shelf, offload what you have and just give them mm -hmm. sometimes you have the little money that you have someone is telling you I have this particular challenge i'm supposed to go to hospital i'm supposed to have this mm -hmm. so you just so the the biggest risk has been to be selfless mm -hmm. selfless selfless even with your resources and even with your time mm -hmm. yes amazing how do you keep your team motivated there's a team that is under you yes yeah there's young people that you're influencing mm -hmm. how do you keep them motivated and inspired to do to buy into your vision and to work together with you um uh, i think one of the one of the greatest ways that mm -hmm. i've been able to uh, keep them motivated mm -hmm. number one is the kind of impact stories that we receive okay uh, every time you're walking throughout the community you receive a text you receive a message you receive a call someone is saying hey by the way you helped us in this thing mm -hmm. my uh, sometimes you're walking up on turn and then you hear children calling you hey kyle chapo chapo na mani watoto festival okay. you see such of such impact stories mm -hmm. they really even motivate these young people and i also tell them uh, i also tell them it's never about the money mm -hmm. it's never about what it's about uh, every time you serve uh, humanity you are touching the heart of god mm -hmm. you are touching to heart the heart of god yeah. so i usually um, i usually uh, i usually tell them it's 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 consider it as service mm -hmm. unto god consider mm -hmm. it as service unto god yeah. and once they consider that they get the motivation they get the energy and they get the zeal to continue working yeah yes you know you're a student you're still a ceo you're working and doing all that mm -hmm. you still have a family mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. in terms of uh, your parents yes. they're still together with you yes. how do you balance all this together at the same time you're a student <laughs> you're the executive director of spread a smile mm -hmm. and at the same time you're required or maybe by your parents to be there for family times how do you put all this together Mr. Uh, it all comes back to the point of planning mm -hmm. how do you plan yourself mm -hmm. how do you manage your time so for example let's take an instance i'm a student yeah so that one i cannot uh, i cannot rush over it mm -hmm. i'm a student that means uh that means my schoolwork must be taken very very seriously mm -hmm. if it's my classes i have to attend them very very uh, i have to be, i have to attend them very religiously mm -hmm. so that means that is the first thing that comes to my mind okay the second thing i'm also a son mm -hmm. i have parents yeah i have parents mm -hmm. uh, have to be available during the family times mm -hmm. where we have to pray together have to be available and then it comes now to the aspect of spread a smile organization mm -hmm. so you realize uh, throughout my day, I've uh, partitioned my day mm -hmm. very, very well. Yeah. So I usually dedicate like almost like three to four hours a day just to sit and think and just handle administrative works okay. of spread a smile. Mm. Regardless of the time, mm. it can be very early in the morning, very late into the night, but I've have that allocated time that every day, three hours, I'll be dealing with administrative works of spread a smile. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time I'm in school. If I'm not in school, then I'm at home, mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. So it just comes to a point of planning yourself and everything will run smoothly. Yeah. Yes. I'm just wondering, and maybe my dear viewers, you could also help me understand at 20 years old, what were you doing? What was your vision? <laughs> what exactly were you doing at 20 years old? This is a young visionary. At 20 years old, still a student, is a CEO, spread a smile, CBO, impacting his generation. And it's all about people. He's not even thinking about himself. He's thinking about people. Mm -hmm. Visiting children's homes, impacting community and changing nations. What are your questions this morning to Carl James? Indeed, talk to us on Facebook, Zoe TV. On YouTube, Zoe TV, you can SMS or WhatsApp us on 0700 We're going to be reading your feedback and even your questions. 
to Kyle's James this morning on Soil Breakfast Show. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a short while. go on journeys. Some of these journeys are known. Some unknown. We can go to beautiful places. Strange places. New places. We can run into the unexplored and discover for ourselves this beautiful, strange new world. This beautiful journey. We can live free and celebrate this wonderful creation. This wonderful world. A world created for you. A world created by a God who loves you and gave himself for you. indeed we are right back as we are about to also be wrapping this conversation with our guest this morning it has been an awesome awesome conversation that we are having this morning together with Kyle James the founder director of spread a smile organization a young visionary doing great things indeed he says I was born for impact and that's the greatest thing you can ever discover when you discover your purpose early you begin to influence your generation you don't just live for yourself you live for other people welcome back guys we are doing a wrapping up of this conversation i can see somebody saying look samuel marx you're saying very inspiring god bless you james continue you. doing the great work that you're doing Okay. Yeah, you've really inf inspired quite a number of people out there. Mm -hmm. And also, Loxan is reminding uh, reminding us the acronym for purpose. We had an acronym this morning from the word purpose. Mm -hmm. And P was standing for prepare. Mm -hmm. Prepare more than the ordinary person. Mm -hmm. And you understand more than the ordinary person. I reproduce more than the ordinary person. Mm -hmm. P stand for plan more than the ordinary person. O observe more than the ordinary person. S sacrifice more than the ordinary person and E engage more than the ordinary person. Thank you, Loxan Marx, for reminding us the acronym for purpose. Lord, help me to be a leader. Indeed, you are a leader today. Yes. Eh? You are a leader today. Yes. What 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 makes a great leader, according to you? Um, what makes a great leader? Number yeah. one, mm -hmm. 
a leader is someone who is driven by vision okay a leader is someone number one you must be very very visionary mm-hmm. that's even the bible tells us where there is no vision uh, also tells us in habakkuk that mm-hmm. we write down the vision and yeah. run with it mm-hmm. so number one is vision yeah are you visionary enough mm-hmm. where do you envision your sphere of influence mm-hmm. where do you envision your sphere of influence yeah so you must have vision number two what makes another uh, an effective leader number two is your capacity mm-hmm. your capacity yeah. because uh you must lead people and when you're leading people it it, it means now you have the uh the capacity you have the authority and you have all the nitty gritties that make up a great leader mm-hmm. so you realize the leadership is 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 more of you than what you do yeah it's more of you as a person mm-hmm. so when you talk about an effective leader we're talking ab- uh, about a leader who has invested more in terms of their personal growth mm-hmm. we're talking about a leader who is very very visionary someone who is able to see seven times better mm-hmm. than the people you are leading okay seven times better than the people you are leading mm-hmm. yes it means that you can see ahead you can see ahead uh-huh. and you see far and, and you see, see far and beyond Mm-hmm. Yes. So today you're you're a young leader and you I'm sure you'll become a great great leader even in the days to come. Yes. And uh looking at your leadership and what you've been doing today. Mm-hmm. Uh we want to venture into the aspect of who do you look up to as a mentor? <laughs> huh? Because you, there must be some leaders ahead of you that are really working with you, mentoring you, you're accountable to them. Who are these people that are talking to you every day? Uh one of my greatest leader number one is the Holy Spirit. Okay. He's the chief strategist. Mm. He's a teacher. He teaches us all things. Yeah. Number two, I look up to one of my greatest friends called Joe Luchiri, mm-hmm. a young leader, visionary. Yeah. I look up to him mm-hmm. every now and then. Okay. I also look up to the CEO of Shofco, mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Ken Odede. Okay. Dr. Ken Odede is really doing amazing work mm-hmm. in terms of community empowerment mm-hmm. that's someone that i'm always looking up to daily okay yes that is great and i want to believe that indeed your story when it's going to be written in the near future it's going to yes. be great great story of great impact and great great help to our generation yes. there are a few questions that uh, our dear viewers have been asking this morning thank you for all of you that are talking to us this morning yvonne ondusi from nairobi you told us the answer is a candle and indeed you are right thank you so much for joining us yvonne yvonne ondusi from nairobi it's great to also hear from you this morning on so breakfast show and now and therefore right now we want to be able to read your questions and be able to get answers from the ceo himself the young ceo the young visionary right here together with us kyle james let's begin our dear expert segment and right there on your screen yeah, indeed our dear expert this morning is none other than kyle james and the question that we can see right there on your screen is number one where do you see yourself in the next 10 years someone is really uh asking themselves where do you see yourself you've talked about being a visionary mm-hmm. leader where do you see yourself in the next 10 years in the next 10 years i want to be someone who will be doing very great impact mm-hmm. very very great impact you see the impact that mother teresa left okay i want such to be written under my name mm-hmm. so in the next 10 years i want to have done great great impact mm-hmm. and also even in terms of my career but the next 10 years i want to be the best mm-hmm. diplomat the best diplomat that there have that uh, has ever been mm-hmm. on the face of the earth okay and most probably i'll be married have children <laughs> yeah <laughs> amazing amazing that is great i don't need to ask you about the issue of marriage because i can see you have a big vision yes and you have a big dream and right now mm. marriage can come later i'm aj kyle's god's timing god's timing <laughs> yes okay that's great when you when you find a young man full of purpose <laughs> indeed you understand indeed there are things that are priority right now for him he mm. understand priority is purpose yes awesome awesome let's keep moving on we are checking out another question right there on your screen in regard to the question uh dear expert our dear expert this morning is right here together with us what will you do to impact your generation uh-huh. mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. will you do to impact your generation in terms of uh impacting my generation yeah number one is continually doing what i'm doing mm-hmm. that is through charity and through mentorship okay that is how i believe i'll be able to impact this generation yeah i'll be able to leave marks of impact in the lives of people mm-hmm. i'll be able to leave seeds of impact 
in the lives of people yeah. so through charity and through mentorship i believe that is the greatest tools that i'll be able to use to impact my generation awesome yes awesome answer right there from the young ceo himself and i want to believe you're getting inspired even as you receive this kind of wisdom imagine your own son your own daughter at this age talking about issues that concern themselves their purpose their vision their assignment it is possible it can be a reality in your home and in your family let's keep moving on dear expert segment another one is coming right there on your screen how do you keep yourself focused amid it so many distractions that young people fight today dear expert you know <laughs> this is a very important question because yes. today mm -hmm. we have so many young people that are hooked up to drugs mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. hooked up to perversions mm -hmm. to immorality mm -hmm. hooked up to chasing after nothing they're mm -hmm. just chasing after emptiness they don't have purpose they don't have direction mm -hmm. how do you keep yourself focused number one is to find a community mm -hmm. find a community where you are accountable to mm -hmm. it can be your parents okay it can be your mentors mm -hmm. it can be your peers because every time you become accountable to people you realize that you walk in the right path okay number two is to understand your identity and to understand your purpose mm. uh w once you understand your identity once you understand your purpose mm. you realize there's some things you cannot even afford to engage in because of the heaviness because of the burden that purpose comes with it mm. you realize you're constantly thinking about when is our next project when is our next mentorship project mm -hmm. who who uh when is the next leadership training for my leaders mm -hmm. so you realize you're so engaged with a lot of fruitful things mm -hmm. so that is how you keep yourself uh on the right track but most importantly is to remain remain connected with god remain connected with his word because his word is a light mm -hmm. is a lamp unto our feet he's yeah. the one that really really guides us mm -hmm. so have a community of people you are being uh your you are accountable to mm -hmm. number two is um understand the but the burden that comes with your purpose then number three stay grounded with your with god and stay grounded with the word amazing amazing answer right there from carl james let's keep moving on we have a f uh, quite a number that we need you to answer this morning and mm -hmm. thank you for sending your questions right here on the breakfast show what are your greatest fears and challenges that you address today as a leader your greatest fears Kyle's <laughs> uh, and think, challenges that you are addressing today I think one of my greatest fears number one was to launch out to begin what I'm doing okay to have the boldness to start whatever mm -hmm. I wanted to start mm -hmm. that was my greatest fear because I was thinking I'm um, a young person what will people say how will people think about me mm -hmm. so one that was that has been my greatest challenge at the beginning yes. at the beginning mm -hmm. but right now I'm happy that I took that decision I was bold to start mm -hmm. and once i was bold to start the rest now is history amazing yes amazing 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 answer right there the greatest fear was to start but he started and the rest is history he's making impact in his time and his generation let's keep moving on yes indeed dear expert any advice to the older generation relating with the young generation for mentorship in life mm -hmm. yeah so i think one of the greatest um one of the greatest advice i would give mm -hmm. uh, you realize these are young people we are young mm -hmm. at some point we we may do things wrong we may do things right mm -hmm. but what we want we want feathers we want people who we can lean to we want people who we can run to yeah. and they can guide us appropriately mm -hmm. that instead of condemning us they will correct us with love mm -hmm. they will show us the right ways they will tell us you see when i was a young person this and this and this they will be they will be vulnerable to tell us mm -hmm. what are the kind of things that they engaged in as a young person that really messed their lives yeah because you realize when someone is so open with you about their mm -hmm. their scars their their vulnerabilities you even get to understand more about life okay. so the thing for, for the older generation is just to embrace these young people with love mm -hmm. guide them appropriately show them the way so instead of uh, you know sometimes i hear people condemning them saying you know gen z cg a lot of things but instead of all that why don't we embrace them why mm. don't we guide them in the proper ways and i think when we guide them in the proper ways and embrace them they'll be able to become the greatest generation 
that is to come in history. Wow. Yes. Amazing, amazing. What an answer right there. Indeed, someone is saying, Kai should be a speaker at Solid Camp. <laughs> 2024. In fact, Solid Camp 2024 is coming. Mr. Director, remind us the flyer for the Solid Camp 2024. This is a, a meeting where young people are going to be gathering guys. And I want to extend this invitation to you and even to your young people. Mm -hmm. We're going to be having a great camp. Mm -hmm. It's called Solid Camp 2024, happening mm -hmm. on April 15th to the 20th of uh, April. Mm -hmm. It's going to be happening at Steph Joy Guys High School. Yes, yeah, 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 I know it. You know the school, yes. Steph Joy Guys High School in Rimuru, Lironi. Young people, high schoolers and teenagers from 13 years all the way to 21 years mm -hmm. are going to be gathering for five days, six days of wow. mentorship, mm -hmm. workshop, and impartation that is going to be happening right there. Mm -hmm. And we have great speakers right there on your screen. You can see from the April 15th to the 20th, 2024, Solid Camp 2024 is happening for teens and high school students. And indeed, uh, you can be able to register right away. You can be able to contact us. You can be able to begin even, you know, paying. It's only 3,000 Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. Only 3,000 for six days. Mm -hmm. As a parent, indeed, you want, to, you want to make sure that your son and your daughter is in that camp. And someone is saying you need to come. <laughs> I will. and speak to the young people i will no problem and be able to really mentor them and give them some wisdom right there mm -hmm. win free empress thank you so much for joining us this morning and you're saying welcome so much kyle what a great session it is i'm learning a lot win free good morning and thank you for that comment you're saying indeed uh she's learning a lot and getting getting inspired thank you so much winfrey impressed for that comment this morning on zoe breakfast show what will you tell young people that are watching you this morning young people that are saying you know i have a dream i have a vision i want mm -hmm. to become a leader mm -hmm. i want to know my purpose right there on that particular camera i want you to talk to young people that are watching you mm -hmm. and uh, how you can be able to just inspire them to begin to discover their purpose early uh to every young person out there one of my greatest things that I tell young people every time that I meet them is that thing that you've been having, it, it has been like, uh, it's been like, uh, how do we call it? A mustard seed. It's been like a little thing in your heart. You feel every day that there's something I need to do. There's something I need to do. You need to do it. You need to do it. So be bold to start whichever thing that you are doing, yeah, whichever sphere of influence that you are in. Because for me, I mean, I can be, yeah, I can be here, in, you know, changing lives but you have very different spheres of influence so whichever sphere of influence that you are in be bold to start be bold to start whenever you have the courage to start you'll have the courage to continue so begin 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 come up hither uh, brand yourself package yourself in the way you want people to view you as a young person package yourself in the way you want people to view you so don't conform so much to the things of the world but come up hither and understand your purpose very very early and begin acting on it mm. yes amazing you know i'm looking at what you're saying come up hither yes come up hither it yes. means what according to you when i talk about come up hither mm -hmm. it means number one leaving your comfort zones mm -hmm. there is a place you want to go but you have a lot of distractions that are holding you okay so when you talk about come up hither number one we're talking about come to a place of a better version of yourself mm -hmm. come to a place of a better understanding of yourself mm -hmm. when you talk about come up here you're talking about come to a place of a higher capacity mm -hmm. come to a place that is above the normal come to a place that where you are able to do things differently because uh, uh, one great man said you cannot do the same thing over and over and expect to see results or expect to see change mm -hmm. so if you want to exceed change if you want to see results come up here come to a place where you are improved in terms of your knowledge mm -hmm. you are improved in terms of your spiritual uh, tenacities you are you know you're constantly growing mm -hmm. so in short what i'm saying come to a place of growth wow and leave your comfort zone mm -hmm. yes come up here what a word right there from the young ceo come up here did you get that i got it i'm telling you i got it that's my take up home come up here mm -hmm. come up to a place of responsibility come up to a place of great great influence and influence your generation indeed what a discussion and what a guest indeed what a ceo <laughs> what a young man what a great young visionary impacting his generation at his time you know people have been watching you getting inspired mm -hmm. and they're wondering how can they meet uh, uh this young ceo huh? <laughs> what are your contacts how you know your social media network mm -hmm. it would be so great to also connect with you this morning 
uh, I'm very, very available, mm-hmm. very, very available. So you can reach me throughout uh, my, um, from Facebook, we have Kyle James, you can reach me out there. You can go to Instagram, you can reach me out at Kiari James. Or you can, rather you can also call me at 011, my number is very easy, 011 40 40 48. Mm-hmm. So you can reach me out there, we'll engage, we'll discuss. Yes. yes, indeed, that is how you can be able to reach Carl James and what a guest, what a, a young man who has discovered his purpose early. You can mm-hmm. also discover your purpose early. Your children can discover their purpose early. That's why you must make sure as a parent this holiday. April 15 to 20th, make sure that your son and daughter is that the solid come 2024. We'll be there mentoring them. I will be there mentoring them. Pastor Sef Jenga, Pastor Masiwe Regi, and great mentors are gonna be there to make sure that your son and daughter comes to a place of realizing their purpose early. Make sure you begin to register as early as now. Mm-hmm. We are coming to the end of this conversation. What's your parting shot? Um, my parting shot, as I stated before, mm. it's come up hither okay come to a place of growth leave your comfort zones uh focus 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 one of the things that has been so strong in me is the power of focus Mm. the moment you begin to focus everything will align but just have focus 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 Mm -hmm. thank you amazing amazing we really appreciate you and we want to take this opportunity to thank you for being here today thank you for coming thank you for honoring this invitation to come and talk to us and to inspire the next generation Mm -hmm. in regard to knowing their purpose and understanding that they were born for impact what a guest and what a conversation we've had this morning all of you that have been watching us on facebook zoe tv on youtube zoe tv we appreciate you your comments on 0700075255 the conversation still goes on yeah it goes on even after we are done talk to us on facebook zoe tv on youtube zoe tv and we want to appreciate you it has been great it has been awesome thank you for joining us this morning on zoe breakfast show my name is michael chosen find me on facebook michael chosen or pastor chosen i'll be so glad to also hear from you this morning even as we come to the end of this conversation kyle james Mm -hmm. we always end it with a salute Mm -hmm. yeah and right here on this particular screen i know you know how to do a salute yes i I want us to salute we are we want to salute all our viewers that are watching us wherever you're watching us some are watching us on Mm -hmm. www.zoetv.co.ke all of you your feedback and your comment for this we want to appreciate you together with my guests and we're going to be giving you a salute and so my guests just get ready we want to salute i'm gonna cue you in a short while so that we do it together mm-hmm. one two three act. salute god bless you see you tomorrow morning
on our amazing adventure.